السلام عليكم اهلا وسهلا في نوتر دوزيام ويبينار كي فا كومونس يعني دون دون زون مينوت نرحبوا بكم في هذا الويبينار تاع لا سيونس لا تكنولوجي تاع لا كومينيتي الجيريان لا كومينيتي سيانتيفيك الجيريان اي اون فا كومونسي ان شاء الله نوتر Euh, notre présentateur, c'est le docteur Ahmed Chenna. Euh, le, le docteur Ahmed Chenna, il est un senior scientist and leader in the, in the oncology group at the Monogram Bioscience in California, US. And Dr. Ahmed, before that, he was principal scientist in oncology, in virology, in bioscience. Dr. Ahmed Chenna has a long Uh, long experience in the uh, biological science, and he discovered many, many, uh, made many discoveries. And also, uh, he is a member of many societies, like the American Chemical Society, the Society of Neuroscience, the, um, uh, the American Academy of Neurology, and also he has uh, many patents, has a 14 US uh, patent. Uh, Dr. Ahmed Chenna is originally from, uh, from Algeria, of course, from Al Wadi, and he got his PhD from Scotland. Uh, today, Ahmed Chenna, Dr. Ahmed Chenna, he will talk about the chemistry of bioconjugation and its, uh, its applications. And the bioconjugation, as we know, it's one of the uh, way of doing uh, the uh, connection between antibodies, small molecules, and uh, to advance new therapies. So without further ado, I will let Dr. Ahmed Chenna to start his presentation. The presentation, it will be for, uh, 40, uh, for 45 minutes, and then we will have <coughs> minute questions. What I can ask you actually is uh, to have your questions sent by in the chat uh, so we can summarize them. In addition, we ask you if you can mute Uh, your uh, microphone, so uh, so we will not have the reflections. And also, I would like advise those who need the certificate to actually uh, send a message here in the chat. Uh, so this is our message. So without further ado, I will let Dr. Ahmed Shenna start his presentations, and uh, we we look forward to it to enjoy it and learn from it. Thank you so much. Thank you for uh, inviting me. So uh, let me share my. Uh, yeah, let, let uh, Faze, can you let me share? Yeah. My... Try, try right now. Okay. Let's hold on. Do you see it now? Yes. Okay. So I have to hide the one on the on the right. This I don't need it. Okay. Just trying to make it smaller. Do you see full screen now? Yes, it's good. Do you see the bottom uh, panel or no? This one. Yes, yes. It's okay. Yeah, I'm worried that sometimes there is something there and uh, it will be hidden. Okay. Now. <clears throat> Yeah. Okay. Let me uh, said. Uh, 
there are more people who want to admit. Are you taking care of the people who are admit, admitting people? Sure, sure. I am taking care of that, yes. Okay, because it's popping up here in front of me. Yeah, yeah, sorry, I'm doing it. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So, okay, maybe I don't know, I'm closing this. Two people and waiting. Okay. Okay. Uh, I mean, okay, my title is going to be is the chemistry of bioconjugation and its application. So, in fact, me, I have a PhD in organic chemistry, but but we never studied these, you know, this part of easy organic chemistry that used by biochemists in, in Algeria at all in, in my, when I was a student. And in fact, only when I came to the States, I found that people, biochemists, biologists really prepare their own reagent, especially for research and development in, uh, in the lab with easy uh, chemistry, uh, just following the procedures are provided by companies. So so, I, so that's the reason why I choose that, especially for the people who are doing research and uh, making their own reagent, especially if you are developing a new test, which is not available. You are testing different antibodies, different uh, peptides or oligos. And you, and you want really to, you cannot buy the reagent, so you have to make it in the lab by your, by your own. So, so this one is, is very important to learn it. And uh, even, if sometime, even if something, for example, it is sold in Europe, for example, but it's very expensive to, to bring to Algeria. So you can really uh, make it even in your lab in Algeria. So, so let's. So, what is bioconjugation? Bio, bioconjugation is a chemical technique that's used to couple two uh, large, one large molecule most of the time, and a small molecule. So, like uh, biomolecules such as uh, protein, antibodies, your nucleic acid, or carbohydrate, for example, with small molecules a dye or, 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 or other molecule used for treatment, for example. So the first part is the chemistry by itself. The chemistry is, you have to be patient, you know, because I have to talk about some reactions and uh, then when, then I'm going to show the application of this uh, reagent, for example, how it is used, for example. So bioconjugation, let me see, yeah, this one panel is on the top. I want to just hide it. I think there is no way to hide it. So anyway, you can conjugate, you bioconjugate peptides, protein, antibody, carbohydrate, also solid, uh, on solid support, you know, either a plate or nanoparticles, also DNA and RNA, lipid and other molecule. So in, this is the criteria for successful bioconjugation. <clears throat> so because you have biomolecule, so the reaction must be uh, in aqueous solution. That's very important because will not change your uh, biological molecule. You cannot do it in DMF or any organic solvent. The link or incorporation, for example, and the conjugate formation should be easy quantifiable. You need to know how many molecules really is conjugated to, to your antibody or protein or any, or oligos, for example. The bioconjugation should be stable at a broad pH and temperature also. The bioconjugation reaction kinetic need to be fast. That's very important because you don't want uh, unstable molecule to stay in the reaction for a long time. The linker should be easily incorporated on various biomolecules, including oligos, peptides, and also on solid support, for example. 
should uh, most of the reactions these uh, need about one step only very rare uh, very rare uh, by conjugation has two steps the two steps uh, tend to be only to stabilize the the molecule so this is for example common uh, yeah i need to remove the one of the two phase how to remove the this band in the top which band that one uh, this one yeah because it's hiding i think you can just like uh, you you press and you like take out take out like in the left or the right, uh, oh, right. okay 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 yeah. okay leave it in the bottom yeah okay so the so let's let's for example the the most part by conjugation for example on a protein a protein and antibody are the same so so you have for example what is you have the most common thing is amino acid amino acid has one side is a carboxy and one side is amine and that's how they expand so the two mostly yeah, react if you have a carboxy reactor, that means that is the end of the protein, or the NH is the end of the protein. There are some amino also in the middle, like lysine. Lysine, for example, has extra amino group. Cysteine has, has SH, for example, which is very reactive also. So you have about four reactive groups in uh, protein, for example, the carboxy, the SH, the amino group uh, at lysines, for example, and also at the end of the protein. So for oligonucleotides or DNA or RNA, for example, what you have here, you have the hydroxy, this is dioxyhydroxy, this is for DNA, and for RNA, you have two hydroxies here, for example. This is R2 reactive. <laughs> So, so let's say I'm going to talk now about each group, how you react it, how you make it very reactive and fast. The carboxy, for example, carboxylic acid, for example, it react in 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 a buffer in pH eight point five seven. Uh, what you do normally, we activate it. We activate this carboxy. So we add a group, you know, X here as activation. And you activate it by these two reagents. You put them together and in, in buffer, and it will be active. Why the activation is very important? It makes this is a good living group, you know. Then you can react it with amino group, and in five minutes, the reaction is done. Also, you can do use also NHS like this, and also the sulfo NHS. Why the sulfo NHS is very important? Because this group made the, the whole thing more soluble in water. So for example, you have, you have for example, uh, activated the carboxy, for example. Yeah. Okay, car yeah. Okay, you have, for example, you have, for example, this is activated carboxy. This one, after activating, you can react it with amino group, give you the amide. Or, for example, with, uh, with imine, for example, or hydra with hydrazine, will give you hyd hydrazide, for example. You react it with the alcohol, give you the ester, for example. Okay. So the best way to, to react uh, <clears throat> Any carboxylic acid, for example, you use EDC, for example, and NHS, you know, sulfur, what it give you, it give you, give you this group, for example. Then you add the amine group, it give you, it give you this one in, in, in five minutes only. So how about the amino group? Let's say you have lysine or the end of protein and you want to conjugate, for example. So you take the carboxy, for example, activate carboxy, and, and you react it with the amino group. 
you imagine this this uh, block this one is a protein for example and also you can react also with aldehyde aldehyde give you the imine for example but you have to add to it sodium uh, borocyanate for example will reduce double bond for example and make it more uh, stable there is another reaction with amine also you can react it with isothiothionate for example and give you this compound or with the uh, with epoxy this is the epoxy group can be attacked on one side and open the ring and give you this so imagine these one are two different molecules the white is different than the black one how about the cysteine, for example? The cysteine in the protein, for example, has SH. In order to be reactive like that, it will be at about pH, about pH 9 or 8.5 in this area. So, so, the, so this one is reacted with a lot with malamide. This is a malamide group. They call it malamide. It's Michael addition, they call it a reaction, Michael addition. You take these, it attacks here, and give you this, this compound. The bromo also will be, because it's a good living group, so the S here will attack this group here, and the bromo will leave and give you this one. Also the S, S also, this substitution from here, give you this one, and react and give you this one, disulfide. So this, all these reactions are very efficient reactions and one-step reactions. Let's say the, here the hydroxy, for example. Let's say in a DNA, you have a hydroxy. So you can react it with activated carboxy, as I showed you the carboxy, and give you the ester, or isocyanate, for example. You can buy a reagent with isocyanate, for example, a dye and you can react it here and give you this compound. Also, in the case of the diol, the diol you have it in, uh, in RNA, for example, in the sugar in RNA, you have two. So you do oxidation, give you these two aldehyde. This aldehyde react with amino group, then you reduce it and give you this compound. So now let's, here, when you start thinking about strategy, okay, let's say you have two molecules. This is a molecule, a, a huge molecule, for example. And this is also, a, can be a big molecule or a small molecule. But what you have here, you have two, the two molecules, they have the same reactive group. Let's say you have this amino group. Let's say you have this amino group and this is amino group, or this carboxy and this carboxy. How you are going to react them together to make this compound, for example. Or there's another scenario that you have two molecules, they have different mole uh, different uh, you know, uh, groups to react. Let's say you have this amino group, this is carboxy or SH or different, different function. So, and you want to connect them together and you want to, they will become like that. So in this case, for example, you need homofunctional linker. That means that this linker has two similar groups, either amino here, amino or carboxy here, carboxy here, or the important, this part will react with this. Also for this one, also this one, they will be hetero function. That means that these two groups are different because this side will react with this and this side will react with this. I'll show you some examples of that. So for, for example, homofunctional link. This is a homofunctional link. You see there is a spacer here. Spacer can be, you know, peg, you can multiple carbon, anything. But you look at these two sides are activated carboxy, this one. So this one, you have to make sure that is one X to one X. When you add one X to this, one X to this, that means this one react here or will react here. So you react this, that it give you one side, but the other side, it's still available. So secondly, you add the second molecule 
and you end up with this. C is connected to this compound with a spacer. Okay, let's say. Can you can you mute please? So in this in this in this one is we are uh, here is a sulfur. The the difference between this and this is this one is more soluble in water, and it does the same thing. It produces the same same. Sometimes this one, for example, is not soluble in water. You have to you have to dis dissolve it in DMF or DMS soup. But your molecule, it is in water here. So DMS soup and DMF are miscible in water. So they mix. But you need only a little bit, little bit of heat. So the volume needs to be less than 2% or so. Okay, this is another, this is the, compound which is uh, homo uh, bifunctional groups are available in the market. You can use, look at them, the different. This is the peg. This is, has a peg, which, uh, you know, polyethylene, the glycol, for example, they are more soluble in water, this one. This one less soluble in water, this less soluble in water. And this one, they have other function, which is the, they have, for example, the SS that later you can cleave, it has other applications, but the groups are the same. See this? So you can use. How about the second case, which you have two different groups here, for example. Let me show you, for example. This is heterofunctional linker. Hetero, that means that this side is melamide. This side is uh, activated uh, carboxy with NHS. So, as each this one reacted with the melamide based on Michael addition, give you this compound. Then amino group here will react with the activated ester that give you this, this compound. Okay. There is another or two reaction I showed you before that the SH can react with when you have this is as a bromo. So this one will react here give you this compound, then the amino group compound react with, the, with NHS and give you this compound. So this is a hetero functional linker available in the market. You can buy and you can use. Hetero, that means that see the sides are different. You may think that, oh, this looks like this one. They don't, this one has a double bond has this one connected with the oxygen. This is an ester, an HS ester, they call it, and this is melamide. Now let's go to the application. For example, I'm going to give you example, one example from each application. The EDC antibody drug conjugate are well known, for example, of the last 10, 10 years at least, immunohistochemistry, pegylation, Antibody oligonucleotide conjugate for immune PCR, protein immobilization on surfaces, for example. So, so antibody EDC, for example. What are EDCs, for example? So, as of two th June 2022, for example, there are about 12 EDC drugs in the market, and mostly of them are for treatment of cancer. So this is some names, for example, of these. So I'm not going to go through a lot. The important is how you make them, how you, how they function. So what is EDC? EDC is you have an antibody, you have a drug and a linker. This drug is, is very cytotoxic. They, they cannot inject it to a human directly because the person will die. But since it is connected to antibody with a linker, with a sense specificity, a linker will go with the, with the antibody will go only to the cancer drug, I mean, cancer cells on the surface. Yeah. So the mechanism of action of the EDC, what happened? The anti, this is a cancer cell, for example. So cancer cell overexpress certain proteins on the surface. So this is very is made for this 
protein. So it go and stick there. Then step two, the colitis internalization. Internalization, the cell will try to swallow this. When it goes inside, what happened? This red is the molecule which is very toxic. It will be cleaved. When it is a cleaved, it go, it kill the cell inside. So how they make these drugs, for example? This type of drug really created so many challenges in terms of purification, quantification, uh, characterization, for example. Uh, so created a lots of challenge, but at the same time created opportunity for industry to really to make a new uh, mass spectra and new HPLC columns to identify, uh, to purify this material, uh, created a lots of things. So you have an antibody and you react it with a linker and with, with, with the molecule that you want, yeah. So this is example, general procedure, for example. You have an antibody. So you have a linker, as I showed you, this one has malamide and has an HS here, ester. So it will react, the amino react faster. So you have the amino react here, for example, from lysine. And you get, let's say you get a three, three or four, or there is a control. But, but here always the question is, they don't know wh where this really goes. They go here or they go on the bottom of the antibody. It's, it's always difficult to, to know where it is exactly. So anyway, we are not going to go uh, through the, the, the issues here. But then come the drug with SH, you know, here. So this one react here, as I showed you before, and you end up with an antibody with a linker that can be cleaved here easily and has a drug. So this is some example, for example, of EDC, for example, the antibody, you have the linker, you have the cytotoxin compound, another one, another one. Each one, this one will be cleaved in the cell with different mechanism. This one will be cleaved based on protease sensitive, sensitive for example. This one is acid sensitive, as you know that they said, okay, the uh, cancer cells, they have little acidic. So this is a uh, glutamate sensitive, for example. This is another also set of different of EDC. So the EDC, as I showed you, has antibody, has a linker, has a cytotoxin. So this is are available in the market. Okay, let's talk about the immunoantibody uh, conjugate, which are very important. Very important because this one used for immunohistochemistry, uh, use it for to see what is in the cell, certain things on the, under the microscope. So what they do, you take an antibody, for example, and you can conjugate it with different dyes. See these different dye they absorb in different from the red 700 till about uh, three, about 400, let's say. The fluorescein, for example, which is used a lot, absorb at 488, which is this one, for example, it's used a lot. So I'll show you some example. This is what you see, these is mostly our proteins because of the antibody specific conjugated to different color of dye. So, and you can see this under the microscope, for example. Yeah, this is multiplexing immunohistochemistry, for example. You can do a couple of color. You see one color, two color, three colors, four colors. Yeah, you have about at least four. Okay, that means you can see different proteins because they use different antibodies with different dye. Let me show you how you do that. This one, for example, this example of, of conjugation of two different protein. This pro, uh, antibody, protein is antibody the same. 
So, so this one, for example, is the ICG, for example, <clears throat> Uh, yeah, Herceptin conjugated to ICG. ICG, for example, absorb in the red, C700. Or, or, for example, Alexa. Alexa is at 488. So let's say you have, a, we said antibody has amino groups. So you have the dye, you know, with any chairs, you add them. You have to do also purification. I didn't talk about purification. Purification of this is very easy. You use uh, column, they call it size exclusion column. What is size exclusion? Size exclusion, it will trap all the small molecule and react it in the column and let the antibody, because it's bigger, the molecular weight is 150, five to 160,000, you know? So, but this dye, it has less than a thousand. So you can do it under gravity or using FPLC or HPLC. So for example, this receptor with Alexa, Alexa absorb at 488. This is very important. You see after purification, you do a UV and you see there is a, a peak here. This is for the antibody, this one for this one. But this one is for this when it is connected to it. So that means you take this height here and this height here, and you put them in an equation. It will tell you how many of these connected to these, three, four, or how many. The same for this one. We have to do a UV, and based on the value of this height here, and the value of here, and you put it in, in, in an equation and give you the number, exactly how many molecule has been added. That after purification, the application in uh, lucimetry, for example. Lucimetry, for example, you have a cell, you have antigen, either that you take this antibody, primary antibody, for example, and this is a chromophore, like uh, let's say fluorescein or any. They were conjugated and you add them here and you wash. Here, look at the, this is when you count, there are four per antibody. But there is another option if you don't have too much of this protein, for example, to improve sensitivity, what you do, you use it as indirect. You put the antibody that interact with, with the protein that you want, then you add to it secondary antibody. They call it secondary. So you conjugate the secondary. So imagine the secondary will stick at least three to four to your antibody, the primary one. So here you have about 12. So you can see a 12, much better than having four. This application is good when you have uh, less, less protein, you know, that you want to detect. Let's talk about other, uh, which is using a streptavidin here, conjugate. I think more of the, most of the biologists, they now, or molecular biologists or biochemists, they know that biotin and the streptavidin is the strongest bond, non-equivalent bond can be formed. This is, yeah, very, very important. So let's say you have a protein here. You want to detect, you have this antibody. The antibody you can conjugate it to biotin only. This is biotin. You have a three biotin, for example, and also you conjugate streptavidin alone. Streptavidin is about 50, about 66 K kilo delta protein. So you have, let's say a three here. You can add it to it and you wash and you can see it. See, for example, yeah, this has kind of multiplied by at least a three X or so. Anyway, biotin, uh, Septavidin, it is used a lot in immunohistochemistry. Let me show you an example. <clears throat> what you see, this black, for example, is breast cancer plus three, uh, HER2 plus three, very, very aggressive. Uh, yeah, this is, if I could, I produce this in my lab. So what we did, for example, so you have this protein you want to detect. So you put the antibody, primary antibody, secondary antibody, it has HRP. 
then you add to it a chemical, then will change the HRP to uh, chromogen brown. So you see it like that. So the pathologist will look at it and will say this is a plus one, plus two, plus three, and making a decision about treatment of the patient. So how to make these, for example, how to make these? So making these is you take uh, glycoprotein sugar, for example, conjugated to HRP, you do oxidation. So open the ring here, as we talked before about the oxidation, you open this to give you two aldehyde, react it with the antibody, it give you this, as you see, this is imine, is less stable, you reduce it, it give you this molecule that you can use. Yeah, you can use, for example, uh, here, for example. This is packed by conjugation this year had us here in packed 2022. This is a Nobel Prize, really. So, so Sharpless, for example, and uh, Meldel, for example, they developed uh, the click uh, chemistry, for example. So came Bartuzzi in 2007, and she used this reaction, for example, I'll show you the reaction to where she made it, she was able to see, to study cells, live cells without, you know, killing them, you know. So I'll show you how she did and what is this reaction. So, so this reaction is about, they call it uh, a click reaction. So you have a zide here and you have alkene, for example, with a mediation of copper, it, it gives you this ring, okay? So it's like closing a belt, like a, a belt. You have a zide and alkene and you click the, and give you this. So she used it for this, this her publication 2007, yeah, for the first time she used it. So what she did, she took a sugar with azide, okay, injected also in a cell, okay. So the cell, this is a sugar, the cell has, you know, formed this, then formed a, a, a glycan. So the glycan, for example, has now the azide here. And she took this uh, alkene, conjugated to it a dye. See, see this color here, you will see it later. And add it to the cell. So the cell, this one reacted with this and give you this one. Of course, you have to wash any excess. So, and she was able to, to see live cells and to see a glycan. So now the glycan is, lots of people are working on them they are kind of in, in cancer, in different diseases. So that's the reason why she got, I mean, they got the Nobel Prize. So this applied chemistry to, to solve biological problems. So let's talk about immobilization on uh, solid support. Solid support can be a plate, can be a surface, can be a bead, like the nanotechnology, for example, they prepare lots of different things. So you take a bead, for example, you have aldehyde or need, and you can add to it antibody or with amino, and you end up with the bead with amino groups. Also, you can have, if you want it to be put more, you can make this longer because it will be not crowded, because this is a big molecule and this is small. So if you want to put more, you have to make, make this a longer linker. So, or you have a carboxy for activated carboxy can react with amine, with antibodies. So you end up with antibodies on a bead. Also, and you have, let's say a peptide also with a bead. And this is IUD, for example, good living group, the SH will react and give you this. Or a peptide also, the peptide has two sides, one side with the carboxy and one side with the amino group. Is like small protein. So, so this one you can activate it. You can activate it with this reagent and 
you can combine and give you these. How about the surfaces? Let me go like that. So let's say you have a surface on a plate. So it has a car box, you activate it. Then you add to it different amino group, for example, amino, this is a peg eight, this is peg 12, for example, this. So you have a surface. This one is, you started with this one and this one are, let's go here, for example. This one has a car box, what you do, you can also connect something to it. This one has a car box, you can activate it and continue, you can make a big thing. This is another part use is uh, antibody uh, oligonucleotide or pieces of DNA conjugate. It's used, for example, for immunoPCR. ImmunoPCR is used here when you have very limited uh, concentration of protein you want to quantify to detect, for example. It's, uh, it is used for, uh, for the last, I think, 10 years now. It's been used as a high sensitive protein detection and also used for protein arrays. Protein arrays is a protein on a surface. So how you prepare that? You take an oligonucleotide, a DNA, piece of DNA, you synthesize this, and you have this one dive function the same, this one, one, one X to one X, you react it and give you this one. Then you add to it the antibody and you end up with oligonucleotides with a linker and a DNA and a antibody. So this is for, for example, example of use. The example of use of this, let's say if you don't have this DNA, you know, for example, so the detection is less, but if you use these, the detection would go up to 100 to a 10,000 fold. That means that what you do, you take, okay, you are looking for this protein. You have antibody specific, either that this one connected directly or you can do uh, biotin, streptavidin. You have this one. Then you do a PCR, real-time PCR. So real-time PCR, even if you have, let's say, you know, that even during COVID, if you have three viruses only, you can be positive after about 40 cycles. So the same for these. So this is improved sensitivity to 100 to 100 or 10,000 fold increase. So pegylation, pegylation is uh, application used, what is peg first? It's polyethylene glycol. When you have different, you know, uh, oxygen, it make the thing more soluble. Sometimes you make a drug and you find it is not soluble. So, 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 so what do you do? If the molecule has amino groups, they convert it to salt. If it is not, they, they, they pegylate it. They add some pegs. What it does peg, it makes the protein or the molecule is more soluble. So this is some application of pegylation, pegylation of, of, of antibody, of a drug, of a peptide is not soluble. Some peptides you make, you find them not soluble because there are some peptides are drugs also. Enzymes, so different adding that peg. This is some pegs, for example, are available in the market. You see them, this one is like a tree, you know, you can put as much as you want. So this is, uh, this is one of the, this is American Chemical Society. They have a journal called Just Bioconjugation and for the last 30 years, in fact. This is some, uh, this book, for example, the bioconjugation technique, it is, it is a must have in every biochemistry lab or, or molecular biology lab or, so it is must have. So anyway, I have one, I have this one. And if you uh, want, if you want a copy of this, I can send it to you as a PDF. This is my email address and I'm willing to, to, to send it to you. 
Thank you very much. Shukran. Uh, uh, thank you, Dr. Ahmed. It's really, uh, it's very good uh, presentations. It went through the basics of the bio conjugations and the chemistry as well as uh, the use of this uh, uh, technique and uh, the technique is now widely used and i you know i think we have 15 minutes now i have few questions uh, that has been asked by the uh, the audience and um, also the audience they are if they want to ask a direct question to dr ahmed they just need to raise their hands and we can give them the uh, the line to uh, to ask uh, so just comment i think the the market size of the uh, bioconjugations uh, in the in the medicines is about 5.8 billions in 2021 and i think we'll be seeing more increase in in the futures so dr ahmed the first question is uh, that has been uh, asked is uh, is uh, what is the uh, to use the bioconjugations uh, bio now with the sRNA and also with the uh, other RNA-based therapies compared to antibody-based therapies. How now that is coming and is it uh, easy or is, is it feasible or not? Uh, I mean, I mean for, for RNA, is. For RNA, the, the, the problem is is not stable RNA too much. So, so th there are some challenges, and and it's still maybe coming. But for example, for for, for example, for RNA vaccine, for example, they got lots of challenges. For example, of making it, and only big company they were able to do that. It's, it's, uh, so. To, to make, there are some drugs now based on RNA, but, mm. but to conjugate RNA, you have to be really, you need to be in the cold and fast and, uh, and, and need to be really, uh, because even one hour outside, even hour, it will degrade it, you know, at room temperature. So, so this only, can be successful only with with companies who are huge is like uh, is like um, Pfizer and and the one that they have lots of experience but the, so far there is no drug yet RNA with the conjugate you know yeah so the the second question that was is how do you uh, like uh for the, the site where the bioconjugation is happening in the antibody, how do you how do you select the how do you target the site? For example, is it going to be in the N terminal? Is it going to be in the, for example, in the uh, variable site, you know, variable site, or it will be in the other part of the antibodies? How do you determine and make sure that your conjugation is going in the right place? Yeah, that, that's one one of the biggest challenges. I said that uh, knowing exactly where it is uh, at the beginning, but then uh, develop they develop it in new uh, new techniques. You know, a new mass spectra, a new uh, uh, really analysis, a new HPLC columns to and and to to find out where it is so so what happened because of them lots of company invested in the linker okay yeah. they, they said okay let's invest in the linkers and even companies they were they become worth 200 million dollar because they have a linker which is very specific so you take the antibody for adc for example and you react it with the linker first before adding the drug and you analyze it and you know where it is exactly, then you add to it the the drug, you know. So, so I attended a couple of workshops about that. And uh, but through the problems, 
then they create the solutions. So there, there are ways of finding where it is. But the important one thing is important in, in the EDC, they look for the activity. That's very important. The activity of the drug is more important than where it is, you know? Mm -hmm. When they make it, you, they, need, they will test the activity. The important that the activity is not reduced because if you over conjugate it, you know what happened? That if you, that may conjugate even the site that interact with the cell. You don't want that. So, yeah. <clears throat> so mostly the addition is addition maybe of four per molecule, you know? Yes. Oh yeah. So three to four, five maybe will not exceed six at all. Yeah. So the important is does not affect the site of interacting with the with the with the with the, with the cell. Mm -hmm. So the other question that uh, has been asked is: uh, Is there a, like a application for the bioconjugation chemistry on the radiopharmaceuticals, either for a diagnostic or for therapy? Conjugation chemistry, it is used for diagnostic. As uh, I for the radio, for radio pharmaceuticals, so when it is used for the radio pharmaceutical. I, I cannot uh, answer this question because I, yeah. I, did, I, did, I don't know. I didn't uh, search it. I didn't see it. Uh, yeah. So there is, there is someone that has a question if he, uh, Laufi, if, if you want to unmute and ask. Sure. Laufi, or maybe he's not on mute. Yeah, he's not in mute. In mute, yeah. Uh, the other question, uh, Doctor Ahmed, is <clears throat> about elaborate more about the Nobel Prize, about the bioorthogonal and bioconjugations. You know, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah difference and what's what's all about. What do you mean? What's what's about it? it so, I mean, it's, yeah, it's, it's solved. It's solved an important problem. You know these. So the click, the click chemistry, kind of, okay. It was there. I think uh, long for long. You know, I think more than 10, 15 years. But when it found application, it, it give it a, a more value. You know. So, so now it is it is used by by so many researchers. In fact, even uh, Thermo Fisher, in fact, they sell reagent now for it. You know. Yeah. So, so, so it is. I mean, uh, Barchosi, Barchosi, she made it. She used that chemistry for her for her application, and uh, and that I think uh, brought the light. To the to, to the reaction, you know, because important as especially in the US is important is the application of the thing is not the thing. If you make something and no one uses it, so kind of has no value. But if you have if you make something even very simple, but there are millions of people using it, that's more important than someone who used uh, discover something very sophisticated and used by ten people, you know. Yeah. So the other question is, um, is it possible to link this streptavidin uh, biotin complex to the long non-coding mRNA? You mean streptavidin? Yeah. I mean, you can conjugate streptavidin. Streptavidin has amino groups a lot. It's like a protein. And, and and RNA, let's say look at it as just as RNA. RNA, you, you you can you can make let's say if you are synthesizing RNA, you can make RNA and you can introduce uh, you know a carboxy at the end, you know, or you can also uh, react it. RNA has has diol. You can oxidize it and react with it and uh, aldehyde. One side aldehyde, uh, uh, you know, it will produce aldehyde. You react it with amino, yeah, you, you can do that. You can yeah. do that. 
You can so this, do that, yeah. This is my own question. So, you know, now with the, uh, with the newer therapy of the CAR T cells and uh, so, you know, so on and things like that. So how now, you know, uh, like merging uh, the bio, uh, the antibody conjugations and the CAR T cells, um, I mean, is there is there any, any good ideas? Uh, because you, you know, with the CAR T cells, you have to have the uh, you know uh, you know to modify the T cells <laughs> in such that it express proteins and things like that and antibodies and and I think with the bioconjugations, is there something that someone can think about? I don't think so because because when they take the cells from the human and they modify them, they modify them certain thing, you know, I, I don't know the procedure, what they do really, but the, they it's they, they, if, so I, I mean, think uh, Saeed knows about that more. Yeah, I do, me. I do them, I do them. We infect them mm -hmm. with the, uh, with the lentiviruses. So they express the, uh, you know, the CAR T cells, they express the, uh, the receptors on the, on the surface. Uh, okay. either PD-1 or it depends on the protein that it will be expressed. And yeah. we use lentiviruses and things like that. But I was thinking, you know, um, it, it, I don't know whether there are people who are working on the bioconjugations um, uh, like uh, together with the CAR T cells. That's the... No, I think the cells, you don't want to, uh, I think, expose them to chemicals, you know, because you're yeah. going to put them to the human back and they need to be really you, ha, you cannot verify them you know you are going to you need to be verified to the level that that there is yeah. nothing toxic you know yeah yeah and uh, that will you are going to create add something you know that it may harm the people you know so yeah so about the purification of the uh so what is the most efficient methods that they do after the bioconjugations is done? Is it the chromatography or what, what, what are the different techniques? Okay. <clears throat> there is a cheap wave in the lab if you are doing, if, you, is, if it is not drug, let's say you, you want to do immunohistochemistry and you, you have an antibody of 5, 10 antibody you want to test against protein, you know. So you buy them, you conjugate them with different dyes or all with the same dye, and you want to test them, for example. It's easy thing. You know, it can be done in, in one day, you know. I, I do, you know, my lab does that, you know. So what we do, we do P, uh, the column called P10 from Roche. It doesn't cost too much, $10, $15. And you use it one time and you throw it, you know. So yeah. what it does, you have the antibody is big, okay, 160K. And the, the molecule that you are conjugating is about, let's say, less than a thousand. You just put it in, the, in that column and go under gravity, you know. What it does, the column will, will, will capture, will hold all the small molecule and let the big molecule go through fast. Okay? So yeah. it's like the, the column has small holes. We'll, we'll let, will trap small molecules inside the column okay yeah. and the big molecule will not be trapped because it's big molecule it will go you might go to, uh, like chemical yeah the, yeah donc uh, and, and you have more than 99 percent pure and you can yeah. you can and you can use it no problem so or, uh, it, or you can yeah. or uh, the same material is available on a column for fplc or hplc and you can inject it, and that one you will see it in the screen. In the, in the screen, you know, the the peak is coming up, you know, like that, and that you collect it, and and you take it and you use another filter to concentrate it a little bit because yeah. for HPLC it will come maybe uh, maybe two mils or three mils if you want higher concentration or something. You can use also another filter from Roche and with centrifuge and can reduce yeah. the amount of buffer there. Good. Uh, so, Dr. Ahmed, time now, it's over. But my last question is, uh, if somebody wants to uh, develop uh, research uh, in this area in Algeria, uh, can they contact you, for example, for collaborations and for anything like that? 
Yeah, anyone has I mean, a question regarding what I talked about, yeah, they can contact me, no problem. And also I put the, in my email, and anyone want that bioconjugation book, I have it as a PDF and I can share it to them, so. Yes. So I think- a procedure, a procedure, anyone really, like one, two, three, four, what you need, what to do, what to add. Exactly, you know, for anyone who is not a chemist. <clears throat> so, and uh, I mean, can you provide the training if they invite you in Algeria and so you can give them a practical training if they need anything like that? Yeah, if, if, if I'm going to Algeria, yeah, I mean, it's, yes. it's very easy, it's very easy, really. Yeah. Very easy, yeah. Very good. So I think our time is 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 done. It is a nice topic, uh, but it's just an introduction. So everybody interested in this area of research which is very important and it's very dynamic. And the uh, in the in the drug and in the medicines is about five five point eight billion dollars, and there is more to come. So I think contact Dr. Ahmed Chenna, and we are here to help. Uh, thank you so much for coming to this meeting, and we look forward to you to our meeting in the next uh, this. Uh, uh, these uh, webinars that are delivered by the Algerian expert to our Algerian friends and all over the world. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Ahmed. Thank you. Thank you. Salam alaikum. Salam, Dr. Ahmed. And thank you, uh, thank you, Faiz, Dr. Faiz, for hosting this uh, meeting. Thank you so much. Thank you. Salam alaikum. Salam. 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 Salam